all set for the horse chestnut stakes. 1600 meters and fired away. 300 to go, Anton Marcus asked for more on Legal Eagle, and the response is immediate. They pulled a length and a half clear of another Russia. Unagi's down the inside, but Legal Eagle maintains the advantage with 100 to go from another Russia who tries hard. Legal Eagle half a length clear from another Russia, and unbeaten over a mile. Legal Eagle, South Africa's champion. Three very heavily loaded guns in the horse chestnut. Yes, it's, it's, it's an interesting race. Um, obviously, Legal Eagle is the defending champion. We did have a little hiccup after Cape Town, which put us on our back foot a little bit. However, he's, he has um, met all his targets along the way. And I feel that even though he may not be 100%, he's, he's definitely, I would say, 90%. And, you know, I'm, I'm expecting a very honest run from him, even though he may just need a, a touch. Um, you know, he's still got a good winning chance. Uh, Tilbury... Yeah, he's actually been in the pink of health uh, since the Summer Cup and to keep him that well for so long is always hard and as, it, as it's turned out, his, his last few blood counts haven't been where I wanted them. Um, but having said that, his, his work is really good and the jockey's reports are good and he's fresh and well, so we rather have to trust our eye and, and, and say that, you know, uh, let's go with his work and his well-being, and and that seems to be fine. Uh, obviously, is a uh, more you know this, it's a big step up for him. It's a big step up for him, but he's, besides the top two, he's he's got as good a chance as as any. And Cirillo, we we've taken a little chance. Obviously, there was a lovely race for him in Durban uh, a week later, and he drew poorly. So I thought we'd rather just take our chances here and see where we are in the pecking order, especially over the distance. I, in my heart, feel that a mile is not a problem for him. Um, and, you know, I think this turpentine mile could actually suit him. So we'll learn a lot after the race. He's in fantastic shape. Um, that 11.60 was just a bit too quick for him a fortnight to go. Um, yeah, but he's, he's in good order. I don't think I need to refresh your memory with regard to what you said to me about the classic for the Phillies as opposed to the classic for the Colts. You couldn't have been more bullish for a return flight. She now gets the mile and a half. And of course, she's ably supported by her stable companion who's clearly crying for the dis distance in second request. Yeah, shame. Second request, it just, it's, it's just things don't go perfectly for this filly for some reason. Um, Cape Town, we know what happened there. Uh, I felt that it was a race she could have won. Um, looking at the, the form of that race, I still believe it was a race we could have won. She um, she had a, a, a hiccup going into the Phillies Classic. Um, I felt that eight lengths is not a true reflection of where she was. The pace didn't suit her either. And once again, just like Tilbury, her, her, her bloods haven't been ideal um, for this race. She's in good order and I, I think she'll stay, as you say. She's a second highest rated horse in the race. So we are a little bit um, reluctant, but um, I'm hoping that we can um, we can go once again with her well-being and what she's showing me at home uh, rather than with the blood. But yeah, that's that has taken the spring out of my step with her um, return flight. Everything's gone really well. Her prep for this race has gone as smoothly as her prep for the Classic. Um, obviously the question mark is uh, the distance. Um, I think she, she shouldn't have a problem with it. I mean, I, I, I was of the opinion that a, a mile was way too short for her and the Classic would be the, the right trip. Um, yeah, going the, the extra distance, um, obviously she's good enough. And hopefully she can confirm with the fillies that were behind her. But everything's gone smoothly. I've done all I had to do and she's got a, a very good chance. And of course, Pierre Stratum on her back as a result of uh, Mr. Marcus doing duty in Dubai. Yes, and, and you know, Pierre, um, I think, substituted for Lyle on the day that uh, she had her prep run, uh, Turfentine inside track, in which she ran second um, to the last year's Derby winner. And, yeah, I've given him the opportunity. Then on to last of a legend who ran a cracking race in the Derby trial, and Zilzal, who, in my humble opinion, is a lot better than what he showed in the Classic. Yes, uh, you know... Once again, very hard to, to pinpoint, you know, what went wrong in the Classic. We've gone for the tongue tie. Um, we're hoping that it, that helps. Um, it definitely wasn't his run. Uh, his prep has gone really well. And, you know, we're hoping for, um, for improvement.
Last to the legend, I mean, uh, I've actually got to have my head red to, to, to run this horse at these weights. Um, I suppose he's, he has always shown us a lot and we, we think highly of him. Um, you know, maybe we, we could have gone a quieter route with him. Uh, there's one derby, it's two million rand. You know, a lot of place money on offer too. He's in really good shape, and, and let's see. Nefarious running brave, Storm Destiny, but it's still Return Flood. Nefarious needs to rattle back. Return Flood from start to finish. Return Flood won it. Nefarious just second over Blossom, and then came Storm Destiny. It's Return Flood. It's a second group one for the daughter of Pomodoro.